Liz has this amazing canon of work that's been around for decades that maybe a lot of people don't know about. And people are in a moment in theatrical history where we're able to hear it maybe for the first time. When I was coming up in drama school and playing gigs around town, so many of my friends, it seemed like every one of my friends, always referenced Liz Suedos and, oh, I have to go sing for Liz and I'm doing this thing for Liz. And, and I just felt this like mysterious uh, artistic champion woman that I wanted to know. When I first moved to New York, within my first few hours of living here, I saw the first installment of Liz's reality show. That like was sort of like the first day of my life. So I think it just, it connected something in me. It sort of connected dots that I didn't even really know what the dots were. I met Liz when I was a freshman in college. I auditioned for the reality show and I met her and I just quickly became what we call one of the Liz kids. So I met Liz in 2000. She was doing a show at NYU, a show at Playwrights Horizons, and she needed a music director and they set us up basically. And it was kind of my first job ever as a music director. I met Liz Suedos in 2005, right after I had graduated from college. And she just kept hiring me for things. So she, Liz really like kept me employed through most of my 20s. The first time that I encountered Liz Suedos, I was 13 and the local community children's theater, they were doing a production of Runaways. And it was the very first time I'd ever experienced theater that wasn't just about entertainment. Well, I met Liz in 2009. When you're able to just hear how they talk about the conception of things and then be a part of the actual product itself, you see the journey and how brilliant that, that navigation has taken the music and the ideas. That was when I was like, okay, Liz, okay, okay, <laughs> I see you. So I did not grow up with Liz Suedos' music. I wish I had, <laughs> I wish I had. I think it would have helped me. But as I collected my sort of chosen family of weirdos and wild ones in this city, in New York, I would learn one by one that they were all touched by this composer and teacher. I can't imagine how liberated I would have felt if somebody showed me a Liz Suedos piece if I was like 17. I do of her by name, and I had a number of friends who have worked with her, but this is my first time really getting to sit down and listen to her work, and it's really extraordinary. It's amazing to hear all the ways that she was pushing the sound of, of Broadway, you know, starting so many years ago. Hey Isadora, can you, can you take me back to Paris? Where Liz we was known as a downtown and experimental composer and writer. But it was always important to her that whatever she was writing connected us all. She was always on to the next. She was like, okay, well, we did that show, let's make another, let's make another, let's make another. Just, she only chose things that really had something to say. She was interested in going to the heart of the broken place and sitting there uncomfortably, courageously, and with joy at the same time and she never left her humanity behind. It was central to what she created and how she created. Hearing the way that she wrote music and the things that she demanded of her performers sort of gave me permission to work in a way that was a little bit outside of the box, but still with so much precision and clear vision. Her music isn't typical or usual. It's not plugged into some like commercial source per se. She was a student of world music and so she has just a huge breadth of material. I think her intention was mostly political and mostly melodic and being able to put music to these extraordinary words. I really appreciated how adamant she was about people understanding the words. She, you know, does seem to let the lyrics drive her and she doesn't let herself be trapped into rigid meters and lets it flow organically. I am just doing what comes naturally to me, cutting off heads. She was a populist, so she wrote popular sounding songs, but she had this experimental heart and vision. So uh, the blending of those two things is not usually what you get to see. You know for years it's been a popular model making people I've just been really thinking about the lyrics and the musical shifts because it takes a journey. And just trying to kind of like investigate and invest in each change, each shift, and what she's seeing and what she's so drawn to. The way she sets lyrics 
and sort of the lines, the time changes, like all of that. Like it's very, it's like very pleasing to the ear, but it also, you don't, it has lots of surprises. There's nothing wrong with getting lost in a melody. A melody really has a lot to do with the song and rhythm and all the, all those things. But if you're writing a song, you wrote words for a reason. So people should get them. And so that means you have to really say them. And you have to understand that where they're placed within the bar, within the rhythm, and why it's on this note and not that note, why that matters. They're all quite visceral. That's probably the best word I can think of. Chewing on that language, which is awesome. Makes them quite fun to sing, quite active to sing. She's so passionate and mysterious. There's a lustiness and a, a sort of refusal to sit down in the things that I've heard of hers. No! Watch because no one's caught your gypsy daughter yet And unless she forgets to keep dancing She may with her heavy, heavy uphill rock Push past the greatest danger of all Which is her own loveless life and this fat rock Not only did she make her art, she then was generous enough to make an equal part of her mission to raise up a new generation of artists. So many of the musicals on Broadway have a taste of Liz in her, and so many of the performers were in Liz shows. The list of people singing songs on this album is incredible to me because there's two degrees max separation between all of them, you know? She seemed to have this sort of ripple of through line through the hearts of so many artists that I cared about so much as human beings and as sort of art makers and art pushers in this world, you know, trying to make a different kind of a thing. So I hear her through them, and that thrills me and that moves me because that to me is the indication of an incredible artist, someone who plants seeds in the hearts of other artists, and in that way she lives on and on and on. And she was so good to young people. She was so good to young people in terms of really supporting us. I mean, it's clear all these artists that have been influenced by her and have been held up because of her. She has this incredible ability to swoop people under her wing. And once you've been swept under and you want to stay, you're like in it for life. Shoot, shoot. Her writing style and her subject matters were oftentimes from different periods, but also she was engaged in injustice and social justice within the work and a certain kind of theatricality that you don't see in musicals that is still cutting edge to this very day. Liz taught me that the only your your best art is only going to come from something that like lights that fire in you. We've all got something to be freaking raging at, and she is able to channel that into the work and in the pieces that she makes. I think that there's a lot of theater makers right now who are people who are really interested in sort of engaging with themes that are just outside our door. I think that they're also really interested in, in being very truthful and honest and personal about what they're expressing. It just boggles my mind because it really is so relevant to this moment right now and I feel like we all have so much to learn from it. The lyrics are often unusual and they're about people or with people who are not necessarily discovered every day. She just, you know, went her own way and I think it's just sort of knowing when it's time to throw the rules out the door. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. Love what it loves. As women writers, we should look to her as an inspiration because she said, fuck it, I'm gonna do it my way. These are the things that I wanna say. These are the voices that need to be heard. I'm gonna make it the way that I wanna make it. I feel like I was very much fostered by her sensibility. I feel very much that she is an elder. The synchronicity that's happening amongst all of us, especially women, to push forward and to know that what we have to say is valid and there is no apologies necessary. And that's the way she composes. That's exactly how her work is. She always knew that this great blessing to be an artist is for the sake of others, is an offering to make it a little bit easier for someone else or to expand someone's possibility of what 
could be possible for this society. In 1978, Liz Suedos wrote Runaways, her Broadway musical, and was nominated for five Tonys. She was nominated for five. Choreography, direction, score, book, musical. She was like 26 years old <laughs> for this pioneering work that she was doing. And it's still relevant now, and it should be an inspiration. That group of women in the generation before us who just knocked it down and cleared the brush. And I'm very aware of that, that I'm the sort of accidental beneficiary of that. People have always said that Liz was ahead of her time. And I always say to people, Liz was on Liz time. Whatever was coming out was what was in her head. I have always felt like I was trying to find lily pads that didn't exist, trying to make musical theater that wasn't formulaic, that, would, that didn't follow what was, was being made. But that was all before I knew Liz's work. And then I was like, oh, oh my God, <laughs> the lily pads exist. There was a person who could have educated me, who should have educated me, who is now educating me posthumously, which is amazing. But the fact is, is that she's able to pervade, like the amount of people on this record even, like people who have or haven't been touched in person by her music perhaps before, are still able to relate to it. And there's such a vast array. I think sometimes her name is associated with a very specific time and place. What's exciting about this album is that her work as a composer stretches so far beyond that. So I'm excited for people to hear the full extent of what she did. There is something deeply special about every single person. It was just the greatest hits, you know what I mean? There's a real individuality and a real spark to each of their artistic voices and hearts and minds. I wouldn't listen to this album passively. This is an album that's gonna demand your attention. If it's nice out, find some grass, lay on it, listen, but then you're gonna get, wanna get up and pace. Just listen to it somewhere where you're gonna have physical freedom because it's gonna make you feel things. I think what is incredible to keep in mind that as you're listening to all these different songs and different from different works and different journeys and different characters and different voices on each of these tracks, to remember that there is one soul that created it. And then you will get almost an awareness and a fullness of just the complexity and brilliance that is Elizabeth Suedos. Mm -hmm.